I'm going to talk today about procedural audio in video games. Procedural audio is a system or algorithm that rearranges, combines, or manipulates sounds for greater variety and or responsiveness. I previously talked about adaptive music, which could certainly fall under this definition of procedural audio. I talked about rearranging musical materials horizontally and vertically to either extend musical materials or better underscore the action of the game. Since I've talked about music in another video though, I'm going to focus this time on procedural audio in sound effects. I have a rather saucy quote from sound designer Brian Schmidt. Anyone who still thinks there's a one-to-one -one relationship between a game event and a WAV file just doesn't understand game audio. Let's take, for example, a gunshot sound. In earlier games, the player would shoot a game event, and then the game would play back the gunshot sound file. Now, this might be fine, but if we're going to hear that gunshot sound effect every second for however long we play the game, we might get tired of hearing that one sound effect. In reality, rarely do two events sound exactly the same. So, with procedural audio, we can take limited sound materials, limited audio files, and process them in clever ways to expand them, and, if we like, make each sound unique. For example, we could have three gunshot sounds, and each time the gun fires, we could choose one of those sounds randomly. So this choosing of a random sound effect is a procedure for procedural audio. Not a terribly complex procedure, but let's build on it. Next we could take pitch, and we could randomize that pitch a little bit for each shot. And then we could randomize volume a little bit. Or we could build each gunshot sound effect out of three individual files, layering them together. Then each time the gunshot is fired, we could randomly choose all three of these elements. And again, randomly pitch shift all of these elements, randomly control the volume of each of these elements. And so now each gunshot sound sounds unique. In addition to this, we could take into account where the player is during those gunshots. We could add different reverberation based on where they are. If we want to get very involved, we could also calculate how close all of the walls are and think about how the sound would reflect off of all of those walls. Now I've been talking about a gunshot sound effect, but we could do the same thing with background ambience too. If we just have a 30 second loop of background ambience, our players might get tired of that. But what if we had two loops or three loops of all different lengths? So they would loop at different times. So each time through the loop, it would be in different parts of each of the loops, creating a unique sound. In addition to loops for background sounds, we could have one shots, a bird chirping, for example, and have that be randomly triggered throughout these loops too. Another important term to understand in game sound is system-driven audio, which is related to procedural audio, but not quite the same thing. All system-driven audio is procedural, but not all procedural audio is system-driven. System-driven audio is sound that's determined by game player states, systems that interact with each other. This is in contrast to event-driven audio, where sounds are triggered by virtual actions or events. For example, shooting a gun, jumping, taking damage, etc. Now, event-driven audio can still be procedural, like our examples of the gunshots. But in these examples that I showed, it wasn't the game or player states that were affecting audio. It was just a random procedural variation. An example of system-driven audio for gunshots would be the gunshot sounds for Borderlands 3. The guns in Borderlands 3 are randomly procedurally generated, but then the sound effect that those guns make is based on the type of gun, the barrel, etc. All of these different elements are taken into account to create algorithmic audio based on the system.
To achieve this, we had to rethink the way that traditional weapon sounds are created. So I started working on a modular weapon system that calls for a sound effect per part of the weapon. The goal here was to answer the question of, can we build a system of individual sounds that attach to each part and also sound good when they play back? We needed to sonically support the differences here, so shorter barrels are going to be louder and more percussive, where longer barrels are going to sound a bit more controlled and precise. There are lots of factors that could contribute to this system. What's the weather like? Where is the player, inside, outside? What materials is the floor made out of, the walls? We can take into account all of these different factors and use them to affect the audio in real time. And if there's a percentage likelihood, it might be. Okay, that's fine. But because we're system driven, I can do a thing of saying, well, where am I? And it's raining. So maybe I'm not above ground, maybe I'm in, in a cave. So again, in the old days, you'd, you'd have to go, all right, well, enter cave, play cave sound. But you don't have to do that now. I can simply say, I'm in a cave. And now I've got my cave rain behaviour, right? Because cave is a state that is universal across the game, so I can hook lots of things onto it. Uh, so another example might be, I might be in a building. So it's quite a bit in here, you can hear a little pitter patter of the rain. If I go back to the surface... And you get a bit of that, a bit of patter. Um, we might be in a storm, so I can turn up the storm. And it'll slowly come in. Now, procedural audio and system-driven audio can get as sophisticated as we want it to. Of course, all of this will require processing power, so as always, we want to be conscious about the resources we have available to us. Uh...